Hi, welcome to another video. So, there are a lot of CLIs and extensions around, and there are many of them that provide you with free credits. For example, there's Gemini CLI, Gemini Code Assist, QuenCode, AWS Kiro, or Codex that give you free limits with a ChatGPT membership. Now, as you would know, most of these things are not something that can, like, replace your sonnet of the world. And it makes sense. Because the main coder model is something that most people can't change. But just because it can't change your whole model, it doesn't mean that it can't come in handy. And that's where I want to talk about how you can actually understand the capabilities of models or coders and use them in an efficient way that just saves you money. I have started to do something like this where I actually use the different CLIs and extensions with free limits to delegate different tasks of my development lifecycle. That's why I thought to show you one piece of my lifecycle, which is Gemini Code Assist Designer. You can also use Gemini CLI if you prefer that, but I prefer this, as it's all in the same VS Code window. Now, this is a customized variant of the Gemini Code Assist. I have customized it a bit with MCPs, as well as some custom slash commands in order to build out multiple steps of the design lifecycle itself, which I'll show you in a bit. But before proceeding, let me tell you about Ninja Chat. Ninja Chat is an all-in-one AI platform where, for just $11 per month, you get access to top AI models like GPT-40, Claude 4 Sonnet, and Gemini 2.5 Pro, all in one place. I've been using Gemini for quick research. But what's really cool is their AI playground where you can compare responses from different models side by side. Their mind map generator is a game changer for organizing complex ideas as well. The basic plan gives you 1,000 messages, 30 images, and 5 videos monthly with higher tiers available if you need more. Use my code KING25 for 25% off any plan or KING40 yearly for 40% off annual subscriptions. Check the link in description to try it yourself. now. Back to the video. To start, you'll need to install the Gemini Code Assist and make sure that you also enable the Insider Mode in order to get the Agent Mode capabilities. You can easily do it in the settings. Now, once that is done, you'll need to do some config. Let's start with the MCPs that are required in order to get the best results. So, for the MCPs, You'll need to configure them in the Gemini dot folder in your home directory. So, just go there, and generally, you'd want to set up these servers. One of them is Context 7, as it allows it to get details about libraries that it doesn't know about or stuff like that. Secondly, I also have a ShadCN MCP server here. This basically supplies the coder with all kinds of ShadCN components available and how to clone them, as well as templates, demos, and everything, allowing it to quickly iterate on some good UI designs. It has some example implementations and usage patterns, multi-framework support, component demos, as well as examples of complete block implementations, dependencies, descriptions, configuration details, and everything like that. So, this is awesome. Another thing that I have as an MCP is the Fetch MCP tool in order to allow it to scrape any page if I want it to clone something. This is mainly for the MCPs. There's also a style guide that I have for it as well. You can actually go to the Gemini folder, and then there you can just create a style guide markdown file and enter the rules and everything. I have asked it to be a designer that just designs components and allows easy handoff to other agents. You can actually build a rules file just like you want by just prompting something like GPT-5 to build the one that you need that incorporates everything you want. I used it to generate this in almost one shot. So yeah, just build one accordingly and then use it as well. Anyway, now let me show you how I use it in action. This is a basic Next.js project that I have here. I'm now going to ask it to make me a landing page for a developer portfolio. This will behave almost like a component 
that I can import anywhere. And what you'll see is that this will go ahead and start to work on it as well. It can do web searches as well, since Gemini Code Assist allows for that. And it can also use the MCPs if it thinks that it's necessary. So, that's great. In a bit, it will make the component for me. And you can see that we have the components here. These are reusable components, which is what production apps generally need. Because without that, every page will have some different component style for the same functionality. So yeah, I work like this. Now, you can head on over to whatever it is that you want to use and ask it to implement the component into the page that you require it to be. So, I can ask it to integrate the landing page component into the whole thing if I want. So, just do that. And then once it's done, you can run it, and you can see that it worked amazingly well without any issue. So yeah, that is kind of great for sure. I mean, I really like it. And it is a much more cohesive way for me to save money while utilizing the stuff in the best way possible. Like, I just know that Gemini is pretty great at designing as well as visual understanding. That's why I chose it. Plus, these free tools allow me to work a lot more cost-effectively because you can really customize it and just use it for a specific task and keep using it as much as you want. It is awesome. And this is just one way. If you want a back-end architect, then just change that. Or if you want an architect agent, then you can do that as well, which is quite awesome nonetheless. So yeah, go ahead and use these services in whatever way you want. Also, many people think that Google uses your responses and stuff for AI training, but you can actually turn that off in the settings quite easily and just use the free tier without any issues. I think that you should use these stuff and try to like have just plain other tools for different tasks rather than one with like a ton of modes and whatnot. I prefer this way and also lets me a good chunk of money in actual work. So yeah, go ahead and use it without any issues. I have been really liking it and using this setup almost daily now, and that's why I thought to share this as well. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.